Forget everything you know and open your eyes. Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and today I'm here to tell you if Vanilla Sky is worth a watch. So like I said in the intro, my name is Brandon, and on this channel, it's my job to point you in the direction of films worth checking out. So if that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So in Vanilla Sky, we have Tom Cruise who plays David Ames. And David is this vain, selfish, and extremely wealthy head of this major magazine. And he's living the perfect bachelor lifestyle in New York City. He has the amazing apartment, he has the nice car, and he has his friends with benefits relationship with Julie Gianni, played by Cameron Diaz. But at one of his birthday parties, he meets Sophia, played by Penelope. Penelope Cruz and he instantly falls in love and I mean who wouldn't with Penelope Cruz right so they spend the night together getting to know each other and David falls in love with Sophia but Julie is not too happy about that and stalks David to her house and says you know what David here you get in my car, I'll give you a ride. And that's when the movie really takes a dark turn because Julie has a total mental breakdown. Starts talking about, do you believe in God? And when you sleep with someone, your body makes a promise with that person. Julie drives her car off a bridge and into a major car crash. And from there, you don't know what's real, you don't know what's a dream. It is a total emotional roller coaster. So how did I come across this movie? Well, in the summer of 2018, Mission Impossible Fallout was coming out, so I decided to rewatch all the Mission Impossible movies. And from there, I decided that, you know what, Tom Cruise is one of my favorite actors. I would want to watch more of his movies and watch some of his movies that I haven't actually seen before. So I rewatched some of his movies like Jerry Maguire, Minority Report, Risky Business, but then I also watched some movies that I haven't actually seen before, like Night and Day, War of the Worlds, Rain Man, and of course, Vanilla Sky. Now to be completely honest with you guys, when I saw this movie for the first time, I didn't like it. I was confused, I was bewildered, I was angry, I didn't really connect with the story because I didn't know where the hell it was going, and for some reason I was just not expecting a movie that would take me on so many twists and turns and you were questioning reality and whether or not David was in a dream, and I just didn't really enjoy myself the first time watching this movie. That was six months ago. I have thought about this movie every single day since. And I'm here to tell you that that never happens. And because this movie takes you on so many twists and turns and you don't know what's real or fake, and since that the ending is ambiguous, I just kept thinking about it. What is the meaning of this movie? So I decided I have to watch it again. So I got some people over, we sat down and watched it, and after rewatching it for the second time, I can tell you guys with a straight face that I love this movie. I love it. So is this film worth watching? Yes. Yes it is. But I'm going to tell you this right now, it's a film that you're going to want to watch twice. For me, watching it the first time got me introduced to the characters, got me introduced to the feel and the tone of the movie, but then thinking about it some more, watching it a second time was a lot more enjoyable and the whole experience of watching it for the first time, thinking about it, and then watching it again, it was just amazing. This is one of the most impactful movies I've ever seen. And after thinking about it after my second viewing, I can pinpoint that down to three reasons. The characters, the intrigue, and the thought-provoking messages and themes. So this movie stars Tom Cruise, and if you guys know me at all, I love Tom Cruise. I can watch him in any movie. I don't care what the plot is. I don't care what time period it's set in. I will watch it if it has Tom Cruise in it. But in movies like this, I even said when watching the movie, he isn't Tom Cruise acting. You know, he's not saying, Benji, we need to get the syndicate. We need to get to Solomon Lane. He's actually acting like a character. He's not acting like Tom Cruise in an action movie. And the film also tackles the subject, can we sympathize with the poor rich character, right? A character that is selfish and vain and doesn't really treat other people really well. He treats other people like crap, to be honest, especially Cameron Diaz. And he's super rich and super wealthy just because his dad was rich and just handed off his fortune to him. And while on paper this character seems extremely unlikable, you can see that he has a little bit of a conscience there. It's small, but he does have a sense of morals, just a tiny one, and you can see it grow throughout the course of the movie. And that makes him a very interesting character, and Tom Cruise gives one of his best performances I've ever seen. Now, I haven't seen Magnolia, I haven't seen Born on the Fourth of July, don't worry, I'm getting around to it. But man, Tom Cruise, he can bring it. 
He really can bring it in any role, and that's why I love him so much. And the supporting characters, Sophia, played by Penelope Cruz, is amazing also, and what I love about those two is that you really do feel like they are in love, and I know they started dating after the movie was released, but you really do feel like they are in love. I mean, there's something about these two characters that just, they fit together, and they fit really, really well. And Cameron Diaz is great in the movie too. She is perfect as like that psycho stalker ex-girlfriend, but she's sympathetic too. And Cameron Crowe is really good at that. He's really good at making the villains of the movie or the antagonists sympathetic as well. And on top of that, we also have Kurt Russell in the movie who is a detective who acts as a great vessel for the audience to pick apart David's brain a little bit. What's really going on inside his head? You know, with all these crazy things going on, all these twists and turns and all the talk about whether or not he's dreaming, whether whether or not this is real life, is he insane? Kurt Russell acts like the audience trying to pick apart his brain and acts as the voice of reason for the movie. Timothy Spall is great as David Ames' business partner, but the only actor that I felt was just kind of lackluster was Jason Lee as Brian, David's best friend. It's just because I, I'm not a big fan of Jason Lee. I don't think he's the best actor in the world, but you know what? He does a fairly okay job. I just feel like every other actor outperforms him. And with all these great characters, it's a lot easier for the audience to stick around and stick through the movie through all these twists and turns, which leads me to the intrigue. After this car accident, the movie really takes you through some twists and turns, and the first time that I watched it, I really did not know what was going on. I was constantly questioning everything that I was seeing on screen, and I was thinking, am I being lied to? Am I just being shown someone's fake projection of reality? And that's intriguing. You know, you, do, you never know what's real and you're always on the edge of your seat because you're always second guessing yourself, which although for the first time not really enjoying it, I still had to watch the movie. I still had to figure out what was happening next. What is real? What is a dream? It sucks you in. It has this really creepy ability just to say, all right, is David insane? Stay tuned to find out. And this of course leads to the thought provoking ideas of the movie, which there's a ton of them. And this is why I really started to think about this movie six months after watching it for the first time and not enjoying it the first time. You know, the movie talks about lucid dreaming and then that brings up the topic, would you live the perfect life? If you could have the perfect life, you could have the perfect house, perfect car, perfect career, perfect family, going on, on the perfect vacations and just being happy all the time or you know what, scratch the career part, you didn't have to work at all. You just have all the money in the world but you know that it's not real, would you still have it? This film also tackles the subject of karma and that your actions have consequences and that bad behavior and one bad decision can change your life forever. You can have everything suddenly just taken away from you. There's also this quote in this movie that is said multiple times, every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. And that makes you think as well, if you have a decision in your life, if you say yes to something, your life can go off in this direction, but if you said no, then your life could go off in this direction. Every minute is a moment to turn it all around. Life is so crazy, it can change in an instant. And the last quote I'm gonna mention is, just remember, the sweet is not as sweet without the sour. And that also makes you think about all the bad moments in your life that, you know, we look at them and say like, oh, those were terrible, I wish I would never have to experience that again. But then again, because those bad things happened, then you can really appreciate the good and the magical moments in your life. You know, we look over here, we look at all the magical moments and think, why can't life be like this? But you have to have the bad moments in order to appreciate the good moments. And that's what Cameron Crowe does extremely well. He makes movies about the human spirit, about basic human emotions that we all feel and we can all connect to. Just go throughout his filmography. Say Anything, which is another great movie, Almost Famous, Jerry Maguire, they all deal with subjects like this that make you think and this movie really makes you think. Made me think for six months, guys. So for a rating, I have to give this movie a five out of five because no film has ever impacted me this much other than maybe Star Wars when I was a kid. Just because I was able to escape from the real world and enter this land of fantasy, but as an adult and thinking about big themes like karma and lucid dreaming and whether or not our reality right here is even real, like can we perceive anything? It's so thought provoking and no film has been able to make me think this hard about its messages, about its filmmaking, about the characters, about the story, so much 
like Vanilla Sky. Just ask people at my work, I don't shut up about this movie. It is something else. It is truly something else and you need to see it to believe it. And you might not like it the first time, you might be confused, but think about it some more, watch it again, and see for yourself. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this review. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Have you seen Vanilla Sky? What did you think about it? I'd love to know. And I will see you guys in the next review. Take care.